Welcome back everyone. I hope you guys are all doing great. I'm here for lesson 17 on subtracting fractions. All right, let's get right back into it. So in my last video on adding fractions, we learned that when the denominators are the same, it's so easy to just, all you do is subtract the numerators or add the numerator. So in this case, three minus two is one. And so that was easy. We didn't have to find a common denominator. But in the last video, we learned that next on how to find a common denominator. So if you'd like to go back and look at that video, it will help you with this one. But I'll also be going over the process in this video as well. So right here, we can see that we've got fourths and halves. There's no way to subtract these just like it is, because if you did three minus one, you'd get two, but then you wouldn't know what denominator to use. So it just wouldn't quite work out. So let's work on finding something that these two denominators have in common. So the quickest way to do that, I like to just list the multiples of four and two and wait till I find something they have in common. So here's, four and two, and then I just skip count by twos. Two, four, oh, I, I feel like I can stop because four is gonna be the first multiple of four. So I can kind of take a little shortcut and just stop right there. So four is what they have in common. So I'm gonna rewrite this problem with fourths. So three fourths got to stay the same and one half is gonna be turned into an equivalent fraction with fourths. So now I just have to do the same process with adding. I think about how to get from two to four by multiplying. So two times two, good job. And then I do that to the top number, one times two, which is two. So now it looks just like that first problem we did that was really easy. Now all we have to do is just worry about the numerator. What is three minus two? It's one, and I keep my denominator the same. Okay, and you know me, I've gotta bring pizza back to this fraction video too, since that's been my theme. It's my favorite food, if you haven't guessed. So I wanna to try to do one-fourth minus one-eighth different denominators so we can't do that problem just as it is, we need to find a common denominator. And I wanted to show you in this video too that pictures can really help with this too. You know, if I have, if I'm looking at one fourth of this pizza, okay, here's this slice right here. Um, you know what I might do? I might just go ahead and shade in the rest of them. So I'll pretend like this problem is we've got one fourth of a pizza left and we want to subtract one eighth. So if we just slice up the pizza more, we'll be able to do that problem. So I'm going to slice it up into eighths. It's really easy when you just make an X like that, then now there's eight slices. Let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it looks like one fourth. Now, what fraction does it look like? Okay, good, it's two eighths. That must be the equivalent fraction. We can look for a pattern too, just to be safe. Um, how do you get from four to eight? Well, times two. And if I did that to the top, the numerator, it matches up. One times two is two. So that works perfectly. So now, I can take away one eighth and I can do that with my picture too. I could shade in one slice and see how much I have left. What do you guys think? All right, good. I've got just one eighth left, just one slice left. Two minus one is one. Keep the denominator the same. Awesome. Okay, now we're gonna try a problem without a picture. We're just gonna try finding a common denominator this time. So three fourths minus one sixth. 
And let's start off with our process of finding the multiples of the two denominators. So let's pause the video and I want you guys to find a common denominator. Okay. Hopefully you found 12 as the least common denominator. You know, one thing I haven't really talked about is you could keep this going and then you would end up with another number in common. Okay, so watch this. There's also 24. But to me, I like to pick the least common multiple because it's the easiest one to work with. So in this case, I could do 4 times 3 instead of 4 times 6. So that's just a little tip there. Okay, now let's build our new problem with our common denominator of 12. Okay, so I said earlier 4 times 3. So that's what we're going to do with this fraction, 4 times 3 and 3 times 3. Okay, good job, nine. All right, now let's do the same thing over here. Six times what equals 12? Good, times two. So we gotta do times two to the numerator also, and that gives me a two there. So what is the answer? Okay, good job, seven, 12.